precision tools that perform their task with split-second speed and accuracy are key in jobs where time is of the essence. Take, for example, the nozzle at the end of a firefighting hose. It allows a firefighter to regulate the pressure of the water exiting the hose, no matter how confined or widespread the flames. A fire hose nozzle isn't a simple point-and-shoot device. It enables firefighters to tailor their tactics by firing water in a stream or flush. Production begins with a long aluminum tube. A saw slices off 16 centimeter pieces called blanks. Just one tube makes about 46 blanks. A robotic arm swoops down to transport them to a lathe. Cutting tools form the valve body, which controls the flow of water. Then they rough up the surface, making it easier to grip. They make a ball groove on the outside rim for attaching the hose coupling. Next, they form the interior. Technicians verify the inside shape with computer imaging software. It's on to the milling process. A computer-guided drill bores several holes for the nozzle and grip attachments. Coolant washes away the metal chips and keeps the drill bit from overheating. The transformation from a blank to a valve body is structurally complete. A laser now engraves the flow indication. Workers install rubber O-rings on a mandrel shaped like the valve body interior. The rings keep water from leaking out the side of the nozzle. They position the valve body over the mandrel and blow the rings into place with a blast of air. Automated machines now mate the valve body to the nozzle's handle. A heated mold melts granulated rubber and casts it into ridges at the top of a rubber cylinder. This makes the shaper, the nozzle's adjustable head that switches the water from a wide spray to a narrow stream. Workers snip off any excess rubber, then ensure the rubber is solidly molded. Next, they apply grease to the inside to lubricate the parts and prevent corrosion. Two more O-rings are inserted to keep water from leaking out under the shaper. Using a specially designed spoon, they scoop up tiny plastic ball bearings and drop them into a groove in the shaper. These allow the shaper to rotate easily. The shaper then goes over a barrel, a metal tube that helps form the stream of water. To attach it, they apply an adhesive to the threads on the shaper's base then slide the part into place. Workers insert a pair of hard plastic balls into the shaper. These enable the shaper to glide back and forth on the barrel to shape the water stream. Now it's time to build the sub-baffle, the nozzle component that controls water pressure. First, they insert a pressure regulation spring into the baffle body. Then snap on a knob which changes between standard water pressure and low pressure. The whole device slides directly into the barrel. On the other end of the barrel, they screw on the valve body. A rotating wheel simplifies this process. They now affix a pistol-style grip. Finally, the gasket grabber goes in. The steel screen keeps out nozzle-clogging debris coming from the hose. With the nozzle assembly now complete, it's time for what they call a damp run. Workers check everything to ensure the nozzle performs its tasks at every twist and turn. From the old-fashioned nozzle to the modern variety that comes in an assortment of flows, pressures and sizes, the evolution of the fire hose nozzle is undoubtedly a lifesaver.